I thought I'd throw a little filter on my lights today because everything in this project is... Welcome to the third video over working on Delia's kitchen in my Beetlejuice dollhouse. We have so much to do today. It's going to be getting this room probably 90% done. I don't think everything can be complete because I still am not gonna be able to get in the lighting today. And there may be a few other details that I add in the future, but I wanna get most of it done. That includes finishing up some of the projects from last week and making a lot of accessories. I'm also gonna be pulling a few items out of my collection that are already made. So without further ado, let's finish up some of the things I didn't quite get to last week. Starting with adding a faucet to that really tiny sink. This is how the kitchen ended up looking in my last video and this is the island with the teeny tiny sink I was referring to. I used my 3D printer to create a faucet and two handles. I printed them with some pegs on the bottom so they were easy to install into the kitchen island counter. I painted them with silver and then I found a drill bit that matched the same diameter as the pegs that I printed on the bottom of the faucet. I'm just going to drill by hand. My hand drill doesn't actually hold drill bits this large, uh, but because this is made of foam board, it wasn't too hard to drill through. And once I have a hole, I can push the faucet into it and it's looking pretty good. I had to make sure and avoid the wood beams that are underneath giving support. I drilled holes and added the two faucet handles and glued everything in place. I also had this drain. I actually had a smaller drain cover, but I lost it. <laughs> I don't know where it is, but I thought the bigger one was funnier in this space. Then I painted the bottom of the bowl black out of the drain cover on top, and this is the final look for the kitchen island sink. I created the stove top in the previous video, but I did not complete the vent hood. I cut this T shape out of mat board so that I knew it would fit inside of the hole, and then I put a little strip of cardstock along the front and bent it down to give it that vent hood look. And then I painted it silver like everything else. As a final touch, I added some black cardstock to look like faux buttons. This gives it a little bit more of a functional appliance feel than just a piece of metal hanging above the stove. I added some glue, pushed it into place, and held it there until the glue took hold. I also added a few black dials on the front so that Delia can use her three burners that are on her stovetop. And this is the completed look for this awkward little piece of cooking equipment. The final thing I need to do in this section of the video is install this window that I created in the previous video. I am going to be doing this into the removable magnet wall, which makes this process a little bit easier. First, I have to figure out where I'm going to put it, and then I trace the window onto the wall. I'm also going to be adding about an eighth inch at the bottom because I want to create a sill. I think this would be a really cute place to put a detail in the future. I had to focus really hard at this point to try and cut straight through all of the layers that are this wall. I didn't cut completely straight, which made it a little difficult to get it out of the hole. But once I did, I painted the inside blue and constructed my sill, which is a similar shape to the vent hood. It's just this little T where the back part is going to fit into the opening. I'm going to glue that in place and then paint it to match everything else with this blue. This is why I love painting with paint straight out of the bottle because I know it's going to match every time and I don't have to remix it. To install the window, I just added glue inside of the hole and pushed it into place. It was pretty snug, but I like that about the window because I know it's going to stay there whether it has glue or not. Now I can use some of the trim that I created for the baseboards in the last video. I had some left over, so I framed out the window to make it look a little bit more permanent. Now I can add that back into the kitchen. I think this is all the updates I need to do from last week that I just didn't quite finish, and we can move on to some other things. I think I'm finally done with all of the structural items for inside of the kitchen, except for the door. I'm not quite sure what I want it to look like yet, and I'm probably gonna have to make several doors, so I might just do 
adore video. But other than that, I think all of the interior elements are complete. So now it's time to make some accessories, starting with the ladders that are in the background of this scene. I think they're also in the living room. So let's get started on that. The ladders are going to be made out of this reed material that I previously purchased for another piece of furniture for Delia. These are really cool because they have a really wavy look and they're also hollow on the inside and that gives me some advantages when it comes to how I plan to create this. First I'm figuring out the height of the ladder which is going to be about 7 inches, not tall enough to reach the ceiling but still taller than any of the people that are going to live there. Once I have both sides of the ladder cut, I can start cutting the rungs. I want it to be smaller at the top and get larger towards the bottom. This is a classic Tim Burton look for any piece of furniture, so I'm excited to really exaggerate this. I'm using a small hand drill and a drill bit that's about the same width as a sewing pin. And this is because I'm going to be using sewing pins as my nails for the sides of the ladder. I use some foam board to drill into so that I know it goes completely through the reed. Then I can add in the sewing pin and then push it to the inside. I forgot that these pieces actually have like a little center part and you can just push those out. And now I have a piece that's connecting from the side of the ladder to the rung. Doing this on both sides means that I'll have two sewing pins on opposite sides going into the center of the rung reed. And once I add glue, I hope this will make my ladder really strong. It also is going to make it a little complicated to get this all to work together, but I figure that out as I go and add more rungs in the center. I can also tell from the movie still that the rungs are not completely straight across. They are a little bit wonky, so I'm trying to add that in as I go. As I got to the second rung, I decided I was going to have to glue as I went. So I added glue to the inside of the sewing pin and to the outside so that every single part that connected would have some glue. I used a piece of masking tape as a clamp. It's a little bit more organic in shape and I can form it around the outside of the ladder. And this worked really well to keep everything snug while it was drying and then I could move the masking tape down the ladder as I added more pieces. Now that I was gluing as I went, everything started to get really strong, which meant that it was a little harder to get those rungs at wonky angles, but having a lot of patience and a fun movie to watch during this process was really helpful. As I got towards the bottom of the ladder, I did have to get out a small hammer to really make sure I could get the sewing pins in place, and also the smaller reeds that I was using, it was harder to get that center piece out. So I did have to drill into them a little bit, but ultimately I think the look came together really well and I'm very excited about these ladders, even though they are just a tiny bit big for the space. So this is how they're looking once they are dry. I could go ahead and remove the masking tape. I made two of these because you can see two in the movie still, although I'm just not quite sure I can fit two into the kitchen in my dollhouse. I just love the shiny metal look of the heads of the sewing pins on the side. Pretty early on, I decided I wanted to make a side table next to the fridge because it was just kind of an awkward area. And there's not one in the movie, but I remembered this little table I made from my attic project that I did with a collab with Abandoned Miniatures. And I know I had the file somewhere, so I recreated it with a different size. I used a post-it to try and figure out the size of the tabletop that would work best in that space, and then I was able to adjust everything in the computer and cut it out on my laser. I hope to have some tables in my shop soon, but as of right now, this one's not quite ready. I had to do some adjusting with my X-Acto knife to get it all to fit together. So I'm not really going to show the construction of this table very much. I'm just gluing together three of these leg pieces so that they are triple thick, which is going to make them extra strong. And then I can add the side supports, make sure that's all glued together really well. And then of course the tabletop, which is ultimately going to hold a pot of flowers, which I think is perfect because Delia has all sorts of flowers. Not quite sure if they're real or not, but they're all over her house. 
Here you can see the difference between the original and the one for the Beetlejuice house. I also removed the drawer just because I didn't feel like Delia really needed a drawer in that space. While I'm working on tables, I thought I could go ahead and work on this little wavy bar that's going to be in the corner. This one you can see in the movie, and I know I'm just making a really small version of what is probably a large bar in the background. However, this is just what I can fit. This is a double thick piece of foam board that I had in my scraps that I just keep alongside this project. And it was already glued together, so that was super easy. And I'm cutting out this wavy shape that I know will fit in the corner. And then I'm going to use a bit of cardstock, cut it to the correct width, and this is going to cover the foam board edge that I just cut. I want this to look really, really sleek because that's how it's supposed to look in the movie. I added some Fabrifix glue along the foam board edge that I just cut and then pushed the cardstock into place, holding it down until the glue took hold. I realized right away that my cut wasn't completely at a 90 degree angle because this was a curve. It was just a little bit more difficult to keep my blade at a 90 degree angle. So I'm adding a little bit of lightweight spackling into that gap that was created between the paper and the foam board. This is going to give it that really smooth, sleek edge that I'm looking for. Now that the table and the bar are done, I'm going to paint both of them in this bright red. You can see the red in the movie, and it does look a little bit out of place in my blue kitchen. However, once you see all of the bright vegetables in the room, it really does start to come together. And, you know, I'm so really starting to appreciate Delia's style and the way she just goes for color. I guess I should include Otho in that as well since he's her designer, but I'm I can't believe I'm just really starting to enjoy Delia's style and how bold these designs are. So here's the two finished pieces in red. I'm going to give them a glossy finish before they go into the dollhouse. I try to keep my channel pretty balanced when it comes to making things by hand and 3D printing items because I feel like my subscribership is pretty balanced in that. A lot of you like using machines and a lot of you like to stick to the handmade items or need to because of restrictions on being able to use those machines. And thankfully, I enjoy both styles, so it's a win-win for me. That being said, I am going to be 3D printing a stool for Lydia. In the scene, Lydia is sitting, and so obviously there's some kind of bar stool in the scene. I'm going to be making three because there's also a bar in the living room. So I'm kind of getting ahead on some of the living room things, but that means things are going to go much faster once I get to that space. We now interrupt our regularly scheduled video to show you a mishap that happened during 3D printing. These are actually supposed to sit like this, and there is supposed to be a back on this chair. Uh, so they're very misprinted, but I actually think I might be able to save these so I can save the resin, save the time, save the energy, and just use these as is. So I'm gonna try and see if I can save them because this is how they were supposed to look. They were supposed to have this seat on top and it was going to be a really easy spray paint job on my end to just make it look completely metallic, but that didn't happen. So we're just gonna try our best or I'm gonna try my best. To fix these, I'm actually going to turn them upside down. This top part was supposed to be where the seat is, that's the footstool, and then this was supposed to be the bottom, the, the part that's all messed up that I've just been sanding. But I don't know what happened here, it's just really, really bumpy, and so it's going to make a really unstable stool if I use this as the base. So I'm going to use the other side where the seat was supposed to be and cover up the bumpiness with some upholstery. Because I'm turning it upside down, the bottom of the footrest is also really messed up looking. It just is not looking great. So I'm covering that up with some Mod Podge mixed with sand. This is going to give it an interesting texture. We know Delia loves textures, and it's also going to even this out to make it look purposeful and not just like a random mess. While that's drying, I am going to start working on the upholstery that's going to go on the top. 
I traced what is now going to be the top of the seat and then I got my circle template to make a circle that's just slightly smaller because I am going to be doing a trim around the edge. Then I cut three of these size circles for each stool out of quilt padding and I'm going to glue each set of circles together. I previously made this cow fabric material for another piece of furniture for Delia and I had some leftover and that's what I'm going to use to upholster the seats. I'm so glad I keep scrap pieces because I just never know when they're going to come in handy. I punched a hole in the center of the cowhide material and then added a previously knotted piece of embroidery thread with a needle through the center. I pulled that tight and glued it in place. Now I'm going to work on the edge that's going to go around the outside of the upholstery. I want it to be double the thickness of the seat so that I can fold it in half. Once I had the correct measurement, I could do this three times, once for each stool. Folding it in half was a little bit difficult because this is a tough material, but I did get it in the end. This is going to wrap around the cushion like so. But before I can do that, I'm going to glue the folded piece together and to let it dry, I'm wrapping it and clamping it around my tacky glue so that it dries in a circular shape. This is going to make it so much easier to wrap around my upholstered piece when it's ready. Now that the sand Mod Podge mixture is dry, I can go ahead and use this hammered silver paint over the entire stool. I'm going to use some masking tape to hold them in place and spray them outside in open air. This is the result. I really love this hammered spray paint. It really does give it that industrial look that I'm going for. And I don't think the sand Mod Podge area turned out too bad. Once the silver paint is dry, I can glue the upholstered piece on top. This is going to cover up all that wobbliness that was misprinted by the printer. And once that's dry, I can use the rings of the cowhide material to go around the outside and this is going to cover up the quilt padding. I am going to be using a little bit of hot glue to get it started and I'm just going to cut off the edge wherever it needs to match up with the other side once it completely goes around the cushion. It was a little tricky with the hot glue. I was trying not to create too much of a mess, but after I got it in place, I decided to cover up any remaining gaps with a bit of embroidery thread. And I think this gave a really cohesive and nice upholstered look to each stool, especially since the cowhide prints were so different on each one. This is the final look of the stool. I'm so happy I was able to save this and didn't have to reprint them. They are definitely unique pieces and I'm really hoping Delia would approve, even with still a few misprints showing. For this next miniature, I'm still kind of going in between whether I think I got it the right scale or not. I think I might have messed it up, which goes to show you, even if you've been doing this for however long I've been doing this, scale can still be difficult. I wanted to create this magnetic knife rack that's seen here on the wall in the back, and I also want to create some of those spices that are up on the spice rack. I was hoping to do this with my laser cutter so I could get some really exact cuts. So I traced around all the different knives that were up on the wall and even the little hatchet, which I think I probably should have made bigger. I think there's some perspective going on here. I'm not quite sure. I also was thinking maybe this was all one piece, like the spice rack was connected to the knife rack. Uh, still, I'm not quite sure, but in the end, I end up cutting them apart. I'm showing a little bit of the computer design because I have had people ask me about it. You can just trace something with straight lines and then go back and change them into rounded nodes, which makes it really easy to get something that's exact and then you can just adjust it a little bit later. In order to make it look like each piece has a handle, I'm going to remove the top part or where the part would be that's the blade and then just leave the handle so that once it's cut out, I can layer it on top of the handle, making it a triple thickness. I cut out double what I needed, so thankfully everything seemed to go really smoothly, so I have some extra for another project. And it was at this point where I was seeing them physically cut out that I was like, these just seem small, they just seem really small. But I kept going, and eventually I do put them into the project, but my brain was just screaming, it's too small! And even after they were put in, they feel small. 
But one of the things I remind myself is this knife rack is not the star of the show and I'm only thinking about it right now because it's the thing I'm making. But once it's in the context of the entire kitchen, I don't feel like that's going to be anything that people are staring at. It's kind of a backup backup miniature that helps tell the story of the kitchen. And if it's just slightly small, it's going to be okay. So I glued on the pieces, as I said, on either side of the handle. I painted the blades with a silver and I painted the handles black and used a toothpick to put a little daub of silver paint. And here is my knife set in the end. Because I already knew how I wanted to create the spices with this little bit of tubing, I knew my spice rack was too small, so I cut that off and decided to just make them separate pieces. Even if they are connected, in my project they're going to be separate. So I just cut off the spice rack bit and left the long piece that's going to be my magnetic knife rack. To finish that, I'm just going to paint a piece of cardstock with some silver to make it look like the magnetic piece and glue it in the center. Then I can start gluing all of the knives and the hatchet in place. I'm trying to loosely follow what I see on the screen for the knife placement. It looks like the hatchet should have the handle hanging down and all the other knives will be on top with the handles upward. And I did make one extra knife, so it looks like she took a piece off of the knife set. I also purchased this little set of spatulas and other cooking items, and you will be seeing me use them later in the video, but they won't be on this rack. I just wanted to show them while I was zoomed in on utensils. Back to the spice rack, I did cut it out a little bit larger. It's just a straight line really with three oval discs and I cut out a space for the back area and then just spaced them out to where I felt like I had a good amount of room to put the spice containers in. To create the containers, I'm going to be using the tubing and a circle cut out of paper. I have this snowy looking punch and I liked it because it had so many different size circles in it and I'm using that to cut it out of cardstock so I can get this one certain size which is about the right size for a lid on this container. I used a heat gun to straighten out the tubing just a little bit and then cut them into identical height pieces. Then I could glue the circles on top to start creating the lid. I did one per tube. After that, I cut a long thin strip of cardstock and I'm going to pre-bend it on a bamboo skewer so it's easier to apply to my spice containers. Now they can just be cut into little sections and applied around the container just underneath the circle that I previously glued. This is going to give the illusion of the edge of a lid, kind of one of those lids where you can screw it on. Although these are being glued in two different pieces, which I think is just easier to apply. And this is how it looks once it's finished. And I'm not worrying about the bottom of the container because it's going to be glued down to a shelf. It looked to me like the lids on her spices were silver, so I went ahead and gave them a coat of silver, and this is the result. Now, to get the spices inside, that was going to be the next trick. I didn't want to actually put real spices in there whenever you can avoid using real food or something that could rot or mold, you want to do that. So I'm using some acrylic paint and just painting inside of the little tube. And I found that swirling the paints together kind of gave it more of a powdery look that I was going for. I did several different colors and I really like how they came out. As you can see, the reed made stand is much bigger and gives me even more doubt that my knives were the correct size, but knives can be multiple sizes, so we're just going with it. Now I can carefully glue each individual spice onto the spice rack, and I'm starting by organizing them in the way I want their colors to look, gluing on the center, and then gluing the two side pieces. And I'm so happy with how these are looking. They don't have labels, but I don't know, I, I think they look cute how they are. All of the architectural interior things are finished. A lot of the accessories are finished. So now it's time to put it all together in the room. I'm so excited for this part. I've been working on these items and waiting for so long to just see everything come together. And honestly, like Delia and Otho, 
Like, I think they were supposed to be like making fun of them in the 80s, making fun of their design style. Don't you dare speak to others about me. But I'm really starting to like it. It's really fun and I've so enjoyed putting this kitchen together. It may not be a very functional kitchen, but it is a very fun one to look at. So let's put it all together. We'll start with the very bright red vibrant tables. This one looks so great next to the fridge and of course with the flower that was created by Andrea Victoria Paradiso who also made so many of the other polymer clay foods. Uh, she didn't mean to make the blue match exactly but she did so I thought the flower would be great in there. And then I can also install the bar, which I'm starting to think that the bar we see in the movie is actually the bar from the living room. And there's somehow like a cut through from the kitchen to the living room. But either way, the bar is in the kitchen now and I supported it with some blue strips underneath it. So hopefully it won't ever fall down. And of course I had to put one of my bar stools in there to see how it was looking. All right, I told you about the spatula set. I also painted some pots from my store silver so that I could create this weird pot hanging device behind Delia in the movie. I don't know why I called it weird. It's actually kind of cool and looks kind of helpful. I'm using a barbecue skewer, painting it black, and I'm going to use some floral wire and I'm just going to wrap it around the skewer and add the pots and spatula pieces as I go along. This isn't accurate to the screen piece because it looks like it has hooks where they can be put on and taken off. But these are going to be very permanent because even after they're wrapped on with wire, I'm adding glue so that they aren't flopping all over the place. I left two bits of wire sticking straight out of the back because that's how I am going to be attaching it to the wall. But before I attach it, I'm going to paint the green floral wire with black and that'll make it even harder to see that these are just wound with wire and would never be removable from this piece anyway. To install it, I'm holding it up where I want it and marking with a pencil where the two wires need to go through the wall. I'm just going to use my hand drill to create the holes, push the wires through, then I can add glue and cut off with some wire clippers. I need to make sure I cut it off flush because this is where the magnet wall goes and I don't want it to either push out the pot rack or make it difficult for the wall to go back in place. So thankfully it was a success. Now I can add in the spice rack and the tiny knives to go with the tiny sink. <laughs> Everything's just a, you know, bunch of different scales in here and that's okay. That's what makes it fun. I tried to see if I could fit the ladder here still. Um, it may have to go across the room. And in fact, when I put it across the room, I liked the two ladders in that space. But now I can add back in the beautiful platter made by Andrea, the knife that I had made, and these little napkins are the same napkins that Andrea made for the dining room. And I found an iron because I figured Delia would probably iron them. I then added some bread and a little drink for Delia. I figured she'd be needing some refreshments while cooking and of course it's not all water that's in there. This little milk jug was sent to me by Panache Luxury and I don't know what Delia thinks she's making with milk but I like the white and I figured it would look good sitting out on the counter so making room for milk for whatever she might use it for. <laughs> Panache Luxury also sent me this other blank cutting board with knife and I decided to put that in there. Maybe she's planning on making something else. And then we can move over to the shiny red bar. On screen you can see she does have a green bowl similar to this so I found it. And these two next pieces were handmade and sent to me and I just thought they would be perfect for the kitchen. I can totally see Delia having these out. I will put the artist's name on screen. And I do think I want something a little bit taller for that section or something up on the wall. So that part's not quite complete yet. During this scene, you can tell that Delia uses her vent hood for holding quite a few things while she's cooking. So I added a few items up there as well. And I might have to add a few more in the future because she really does pack the vent hood with a lot of things. I'm going to move the ladders over to this side of the wall. However, I think I'm going to have to permanently attach them. Otherwise, it's hard to put them against the wall without them being in the walking space. But I'm not attaching them yet, so I can think about it. I just had to put mini Aira in the kitchen because of course I don't have Adelia yet. And I think 
I don't know. I'm just so, so happy with how it's coming together. I think the colors are really exciting. I think it still screams Delia's Kitchen and the glass block came out and I don't know. I just, I can't stop looking at it and being so happy with it. I've never been so happy with such a colorful project <laughs> before. And I couldn't help myself but set up the dining room right next to the kitchen. And of course, it is all blue as well. And so I think the two complement each other really, really well. And now I just have to work on the very boring living room. So that's all I have for you today. This is where I'm going to be leaving Delia's kitchen for now. I am gonna to have to revisit it to put in lighting, to put in the door, and I'm sure I'm gonna find some other things that I know will just be perfect for the space. The last room that needs to be done on the lower floor is the living room. And I'm really excited for this space as well. However, it includes the stairs, which makes it a little bit more complicated. And it also has the tower, which I need to figure out if it's going to be removable or not. So I have a lot to think through before I get into the living room. If you watch my goals video at the beginning of this year, you'll know that one of my major goals is to get the entire lower level of the Beetlejuice house done, which means I have the rest of the year to work on this living room and make it fantastic. I also am not quite sure what my beetle gust project is going to be. It might be another room in the netherworld, so that'll be an additional room that's done. So I still have a lot of beetle juice stuff to do. Also, part of finishing the lower level is going to be the ceilings and the lighting and figuring out how that next layer is going to sit. Oh, and I think part of my goal was building the walls for the second floor. We got a lot to do. <laughs> but for now, I'm gonna leave it here. I have a lot more work to do on the captain's quarters as well, which is going to be finishing up this year. So many exciting things are going on and I'm just, I wish I had another set of hands to, to, to do it, like multiple, hands. These hands could work on Beetlejuice. These hands could work on the captain's quarters. That would be great. <laughs> I hope you all have an amazing week and I will see you in the next one. Bye. <gasps> Stormy's blue. You're blue. You look beautiful in the light, my dear. Stormy's blue.